Let's do our Loki episode two recap. Episode two recap of Loki, which was Loki. <laughs> I've been waiting to do that joke, and it's so bad. It was Loki, the best episode of the Marvel shows. Loki, episode, <laughs> spoiler, f- spoiler filled recap as usual. Let's let's go. Let's just kind of break down what ha- what happened and uh, what I thought real quick, and we'll just get, and we'll keep keep things moving kind of smoothly if we can. You know, it's, um, so yeah, more of the it's more that kind of episode people wanted, like to see things really happening, some action, some some like twists and turns that we got that here you know it wasn't just a story episode or a character episode this was the one this immediately episode two is more the the energy people wanted i think from the first one that's not to take away from how important the first one was and how good the first one was but this one really immediately kind of whoa holy shit you know like so and there's still four more this week coming up uh which will be in a couple of days for people seeing this or listening to this right now. Yeah. It's crazy because now it used to be it used to be Fridays and then it was kind of still fresh for people, fresher. I feel like with the Wednesday release people are, it's you know, it's weird that my recap is so many days later than the episode, but I'm not going to change my it's it's already a lot. I'm not going to switch it up for that. Which I'll get into some of the news too with with what Disney Plus is doing because they're changing their whole thing up with that too. Because um, Loki has been very popular, very successful, and 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 it's it's a long time. It doesn't it feel like it's been a long time coming for something like this. Like a, I mean, Loki has such a, a an invigorating, like wild energy in anything he's in that we yeah a, a story centered on him just it makes it it's it feels like something we've needed and i felt that this week just that in and the humor too the humor the the uh, the mischief right the uh, the plot twists the weirdness right all that comes into play with a loki centered series or story or whatever and I love, I love this. I really do. It's, 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 a, it's moving up and up the list for me. But this one also played more with the dynamic of just Loki and and Mobius. I think, which was great because Owen Wilson and Tom Hiddleston's uh, and uh, chemistry, their their dynamic, the whole thing. I really love the two of them, and they work so well together. And I think, and think that's where obviously it's where most of the laughs come from. I was laughing. Uh, there were some good, some good moments there, but also just playing with the idea of two characters that that are so different from each other, yet still kind of that they have similarities, but they're different perspectives. Which we get a we we get a, I think the scene between the two of them, where they just kind of exchange their perspectives and express their beliefs. And what motivates them, and and their what they believe their purposes are, right? Uh, just the the kind of exchanging of perspectives between each other was the most important scene in this episode. Story moment, plot moment, now character moment. Plot moment was the twist. There was obviously the twist, which was the most important. The reveal, I guess, not the twist, but the reveal uh, at the end of the episode, which is obviously a very important scene. But I think in terms of character, uh, low-key, let's see, there it is again, low-key, uh, low-key, d- hey, stop, no, don't I, you're distracting me, stop growling, there's nothing to growl at, come on, kid, what are you doing to me here, in the middle of this, hey, don't make me yell, God damn it. Hey, it doesn't matter. I could I could do that all day. She won't stop. When she's got it in her head, it doesn't matter. So 
apologies for the growling if you can hear it. Sometimes I feel like it doesn't matter. I'm, I hear everything, and then when I watch it later, it's not as loud as I hear it. Uh, it's still distracting me, though. Um, yeah, so I think that was low-key <laughs> in this episode, the, the most important scene. Um, and then they started to dig deeper into how everything works. They were throwing phrases around, sentences, like words, to kind of explain how this all works with the sacred timeline and, like, variants and all how this... And it got a little... I'd have to go through it again to really kind of try and grasp it even more. But I think I'm still pretty much on track with how that works from what I said last week. That Pretty much. I'm still not 100%, obviously. I, I'm not sure... If I'm right about this idea of there being multiple realities already, but then how can there be multiple Lokis, which they fully open the doors on here? We see literal holograms of multiple iterations of Loki. Where are they all coming? Is it is are they all created through events that are that are that come from Nexus moments, like points where variant where where Loki? It's it doesn't seem like it. See it seems more likely that there are multiple realities within one sacred timeline uh but the thing that the tva fears you know is this idea of creating this chaotic like super multiverse where where a bunch of branch realities kind of just and then it causes the kind of destruction of everything um not that's not not to say that that's 100 percent uh how that works but but that is exactly how lady loki right the reveal donut please stop growling please stop growling dogs man it doesn't fucking matter what you say and what is it she even hears man someone walking for a second Come on, man. Uh, it's actually distracting me from being... Fuck, man. Um, yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. The, uh... Yeah. That's the big thing that the TVA wants to prevent, is this idea of, like, a big, giant multiverse. Um... And we learn who the variant is, which Loki it is. And it's Lady Loki, it's the female version of Loki from, I mean, it's got to be from another reality, right? This show is kind of showing us that there's the potential for multiple iterations of every character we've ever met. Is that not what we are learning here? Um, and so, yeah, Lady Loki's attack is exactly that. Her, her whole plan is this idea of attacking the TVA with like a multiverse bomb, basically, using their own tech against them to create that chaos multiverse, right? And that's where they leave us with this cliffhanger kind of moment, not just with her revealing herself and pulling that move, but also Loki following her and chasing her to wherever she went. I also think it's cool how, uh, while I was watching it, I figured out what they were going to do with the whole idea of the apocalypse and how... You can fuck with anything before an apocalypse. I was like figuring that out as they were going through it. Um, yeah, this idea of the apocalypse where you can you can jump into a time any time before a natural occurring apocalypse and fuck with anything and it's not going to create a, a nexus moment. It's not going to create a branch reality because everything gets destroyed. You can do anything you want right before. And that was so that was cool. That it makes sense too, right? Um, makes you wonder how, it also just makes you wonder, like, all the events we've ever seen, ever in the MCU, how many, like, variants were hanging around, like, just popping in, how, was the TVA around for things, like, well, it just makes you think about all that kind of stuff, I mean, we already saw, like, how time travel, I mean, as soon as it's invented, and, and to say invented, by the way, is, is, I mean, we just all assume Tony Stark, wow, he invented time travel, but it's, the TVA is like well beyond any technology that Tony Stark invented in Endgame. Like they already do that kind of. They travel through time, do stuff. 
all the time. So, um, but but in Endgame, this idea of them being there um, was immediately something we all thought about. But it, it's not a, it's not even like that, right? Because when you go back in time, you immediately anything you change immediately creates a branch reality. And the TVA didn't get intervene. They didn't intervene with the Avengers because the they saw. They could see the future that the and Avengers, that Captain America would go back and fix everything so that there are no branch realities. There's no nexus moments that they accidentally create. Um, smart that they knew how to f- f- keep that from happening without even knowing exactly what it is or, or I guess what it's called, the terminology of it that the TVA uses. Why does that matter, the, the terminology? They knew not to fucking leave things the way they were because they would create a whole bunch of... The thing is, yeah, it's crazy, too, because they do accidentally create a nexus moment when they let Loki escape, which leads to this story now. Um, That was a nexus moment, and uh, it's crazy, man. This fucking... Lady Loki seems to be... She could very well be the superior Loki, and this bothers the shit out of Loki, as we have seen. Like, she, he, he wants to uh, pursue her more than anything to just kind of figure her out even more and see if he can potentially... He It bothers him that he can't be the superior Loki. You know, he's he's been unable to outsmart... This idea of, like, their fate to... The Loki fate is is destined to fail. This idea that you'll always be a side character in someone else's story who just comes in and messes things up and then inevitably inevitably fails is something that Lady Loki and our Loki is trying to kind of break the trend of. They, they'd rather actually be the heroes of their own story for once and succeed. And so there's a part of Loki, I think, following her in to wherever she goes at the end of that episode. Is part of it is... I'm following I'm following a version of myself that that could transcend all I've ever done and been and maybe I can learn to actually succeed for once if I follow this path of uh I don't know um I guess superiority or interesting to think about um and then I uh I mean, we'll see what Lady Loki's motivations are. We still don't exactly know what she's trying to do 100%. But I'm also, I'm not taking it off the table at all. This idea that the TVA, it could potentially be revealed to be the actual antagonists here. And Lady Loki's less bad than we think initially are supposed to think that always seems to be a thing this twist of roles tva is not revealing everything that that you know that they sh- there's no there's no full truth there and we're gonna learn it and then it's like oh shit they're actually fucked up or something you know and and the attack that lady loki's even doing is actually for the better in a way I, it's just it there's a possibility of that of course um I also thought about how WandaVision could connect to things. Somebody else brought this up about this this con- this possibly connecting to the post credit scene of WandaVision where she she's kind of using magic to listen to other dimensions maybe and she right I think and she hears her kids I guess suppose from another dimension and to think about how it could potentially have been what Lady Loki just did causes Wanda to even be able to hear them because maybe she created a multiverse of where they exist again or so but there's possibly already a, a reality where they already exist and to think about Wanda's powers and how they naturally have the ability to manipulate reality I mean she fucking gave Monica Rambeau superpowers for crying out loud she has the ability to manipulate reality so how does that fuck with things how does that get on the TVA's radar? How does how does she make sirens less loud when they <laughs> every fucking
fucking little thing while I'm recording. Every fucking little thing has to happen while I'm recording something. I think the dog finally stopped. Christ. And, um... I just, I, I just, that, that's something I wanted to, I wanted to think about, too. I mean, don't forget, Wanda's a nexus being. So that's kind of a big deal. I don't know. I don't have, like, a deep, deep breakdown for this episode. It's pretty straightforward. Everything I've touched on. What else is there? Oh, there's a little hint of something. Renslayer saying to Mobius... Was it Rens? Am I confusing the character names? I hope not. Um, Mobius' boss... Uh, mentions how another agent gave that to me. In the comics, Mobius turns out to be like a bunch of Mobiuses. Like clones that the TVA uses to do its jobs and shit. I'm curious if it's actually another Mobius that gave her that, that, was it the pen they were talking about? Yeah. Uh, what else happened in this episode? I love that whole fucking Pompeii sequence. It was hilarious. Um, and then there's a chance that Kid Loki was already hinted at. The whole thing with the candy is consistent. Like, this whole thing with the candy made me think that our variant's Kid Loki and it ends up being Lady Loki. But Kid Loki is important. Because he ends up being a super important, legit, full-time member of the Young Avengers. And, um, I just, we're gonna see him. We're gonna have to see him. And we'll see how that plays out. I think there's a chance the candy hints to a youthful energy, a youthful character. Therefore, Kid Loki possibly hinted at. Uh, What do you think? How'd I do? Did we do good? Are we gonna make it? <laughs>